All right, uh, my name is Fadi. I'm the development manager at Excellent Audio. I'm going to talk to you today about developer experience, or DX. And that's a term that I use to refer to the extension of user experience design principles to developers. So this is not an industry standard term as far as I know. This is just something that I, this is a term that I, that I use personally. Now, just before we start, quick show of hands in the room. Who is familiar with user experience design or UX? All right, that's a little bit more than half the room. That's pretty good. Um, so just as a recap, and for those who... Might not be on, there's a button on the side. Uh, oh, oh. Nope, I'll use the arrow keys. All right, so uh, as a recap, as I said, and just to uh, give people who don't know what UX is uh, an idea, we're going to consider this little application um, who, well, this is screenshotted from Google uh, Images, so I have no idea who developed this, and I'm not sing singling them out, but just saying. Um, so this is an application that does a bulk rename on a bunch of files. Now, just try to think of yourself, to yourself, like, why would someone say that this application suffers from, like, poor user experience design? The, the simple answer I can think of, and this is like, you know, ignore all the, you know, the, all the aesthetics. It's not pretty, but that's not the point. The point is that if you want to do something, there's no easy and intuitive way to do it, even if it's something fairly simple. You actually have to look at the, the different boxes that you have here, and there's 14 of them, and you'll have to understand how, what each, each of them does and how they interact with each other, and then you'll be able to do what you want to do. And my hunch is that if you open up an application like this, you're probably more likely to close it down and walk away than actually do something. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, how about this? How about your code? You know, your, your source code. How friendly and usable is that? And here I'm not talking about your actual application. This is your code before you build it, before it becomes a binary and you put it in the hands of users. This is just your source code. How friendly and usable is that? And this is basically what I'm going to be talking about today. This is what I refer to as developer experience. So we're C++ developers here. We're all used to optimizing our code for speed and memory use. This is pretty much why we use C++, right? But then do we actually optimize for usability and particularly here for readability of the code? So let's say someone who's not familiar with your code base comes in and reads your code. Will they be able to figure out, okay, what's the structure of this code? What are the different parts? What do they do? How do they interact with each other? How, how easy would that process be? And then it comes time for them to actually modify the code. Let's say it's a new hire or someone who's new to the team. You know, how easy and intuitive it is to find where the modification needs to go. There's a new feature. There's a bug fix that needs to be made. Um, I need to add new functionality. Okay, do we have a class that does this? How do I find it? Um, where in the code base do I need to make this change? Is it single place? Is it multiple places? Um, if I make a change, how do I know that I didn't break anything? Um, how do I know that I actually did what I was supposed to do? You know, if I test manually, there's maybe one, two use cases I can think of, but what are all the use, use cases that I need to, care of, to take care of? And then finally, there's, of course, building, right? Your build infrastructure is, is very important. What happens if you need to, let's say, upgrade your compiler? If you need to up, uh, update to a new version of a library that you need uh, that you depend on, um, or you know, port your application to a new platform, how will you know? How easily is it for you to know that yeah, this went well? Is it let's ship and figure out what happens, or you know? So, I'm guessing you realize like this. These three things are pretty much what we do as developers, right? And I want to sort of highlight that. Optimizing for speed and memory use and optimizing for usability, these are not contradicting by any means. You can actually optimize for all three of them. And so I want you to focus on two very simple rules, right? The first one is the user of your code base should never feel stupid. Think of this in terms of like your general user, the person who is actually using your application once it's built. You don't want them to look at your application and go like, you know, deer in the headlights and just like put it away and, and walk, right? Why do you want your developers to do that then? Your developers should have just the same kind of luxury of being able to parse your, your source code uh, as your users. And the second thing is, you know, working with your code base should be as delightful as possible and the least frustrating possible. These are principles that I've borrowed from UX, so this is, I didn't come up with this. Someone actually figured it out for general users and I'm just saying, hey, why don't we do this for developers as well? 
So this is a lightning talk, so I'm going to try to keep it as brief as possible. But I'm going to give you like maybe some ingredients um, that could be relevant. The first one is express in intent. So wrote code that is simple, and always remember that when you when you're done with the task and you're about to commit your code, basically this is the this is the point where you're about to forget everything, all the reasoning that you put into actually making that change. From the moment you walk away into a new task, your the entire intent behind your change has has, has, is gone. If you come back to the same code one month later, you're not going to remember why you made those changes this way. So you have to bake in your intent into your code. Your code has to express the intent, has to express why it's done this way and what is it that this code does. Review your changes with your teammates. This is code review, basically, right? Everyone knows why code review is important. But from a, from a DX perspective, it's also important because it allows you to look at your code through fresh eyes. When you show your code to someone else, you're looking at it as if you're looking at it for the first time. And you also have a second person next to you also looking at it. And so you will, you will be able to maybe find some, some gaps in how readable the code is or if, if your intent is not entirely expressed in the code. Try to be consistent in your API structure, in the way you format your code, in your code organization, and so on. Now, well, that's for covered code, uh, uh, formatting. But when you're, lo when you're looking at you know, a, a large team, everyone has their own preferences. But the problem is that, well, what happens if you have different parts of the code base that are structured and formatted different ways? Then you end up having, like every time you open a new part of the code that you're not familiar with, it's like, it's like you walk into a room and you have no idea where anything is. So this, this doesn't exactly optimize for readability. It doesn't optimize for make, helping your developers find where they need to make the changes. Avoid do-it-all functions, classes, and modules with specifically functions with no obvious return path. So Olafur actually went quite a lot into this, uh, so he ate up into my, uh, in my presentation today. But um, essentially, if you have a very large function, especially like let's say like a 900 line function with a return statement every 150 lines, if you're changing something slightly high up in the function, you have no idea what, what the effects are going to be down the line. Um, and you know, modifying becomes a very high risk operation. And so basically this will scare the developer from actually changing the code. And speaking of that, use tests. Um, if you're working in a, in a team that uses TDD, that's great. Uh, otherwise tests in general are, are very good. In my experience, they're the best way to encourage developers to modify code, especially complex code, because that gives you some sort of safety net. You make a change, you run the test, you figure out, okay, I didn't break anything. At least nothing that's documented by the tests. And that gives you some, some more courage to actually make bigger changes. And finally, bake your assumptions, especially like the assumptions about your code, into your contracts and your asserts. These are a very important tool that we have. Um, and it will let you sort of scope down, you know, what, where does your function live in the parameter space. If you know that this function will assume or has a contract that it'll take certain parameters that are all, only exist within this space, you don't have to worry about all the other stuff because you're already vo violating your contract. And if you have a search about this, you'll already get some notification about this. But so this way it sort of scopes, scopes things down and this way you know, okay, this is all I need to worry about. I don't need to worry about all the other possibilities because that's a violation of the contract. And that's it for me. So as I said, I work for Excellent Audio. We are recruiting, so please do hit that link. And this is how you find me on uh, social media and uh, all the other stuff. Thank you.